Welcome, 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 welcome back to another episode of the Vanity Man Podcast. I'm your host, David Chambers, and this is a mini episode that I do on the weekends. I need you to record these just out of something that's come up. And what's come up recently is conversations about how to attract and meet a conscious woman. It's something I've talked to men about. It's something I've talked to, to people in workshops about. So I'm going to do a little episode about it. And I don't know how long this is going to be because I've got three areas I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about what a conscious woman is because that will, that's going to be different for different people. But this is my view from my experience of the many women I've dated and the women that I am lucky enough to have in my community and around me in my life. I want to talk about what a man needs to do to himself, with himself in his growth journey to be attractive to this sort of woman. And also where you can find this sort of woman, like where in the world are these women? Because they're around. I meet loads of them, to be honest. <laughs> I've met loads of them in my life. So let's start with the first point. What's a conscious woman? What does it like? A conscious woman, in this context, right, someone who's going to have like a deep awareness and passion for themselves, their life, um, a deep a intentionality about how they move through the world. They maybe even feel really guided by spirit, God, um, you know, Shakti, depending on, you know, if they're really deep into their spirituality and they're following particular tenets or particular religions or particular um practices right but they're likely to be very self-aware emotionally intelligent mindful and present they're going to be authentic and genuine they're going to be interested in the world and what's happening in the world they're going to be purposeful they'll be able to communicate openly and clearly with you they're going to be working on their own, own healing and their own wounds um empathetic compassionate to themselves but also men and their struggles as well and the struggles happening in the world they're going to have deep values and going to live by their values they're likely to be very growth orientated and um, there's going to be respect around men, masculinity, women and femininity. They're unlikely to hear them kind of going like all men are shit or all, all, all women are rubbish. Feminism is pointless, you know, that sort of thing. They're not going to be engaging in that sort of conversation. And um, yeah, this is, this is something that I, I see as well in women. And it's also going to see things like they're not going to be playing games. Um, they're not, they're really unlikely to be just attracted by money and good looks. Because ultimately, she's going to want depth. She's going to want a man who can really meet her at her level where she is and join her in a quest to create something magnificent through relationship, through family, through legacy, through business, whatever, right? And she's not going to be perfect, right? She's not going to be a perfect person in all of these areas. She's not going to be a 10 out of 10 in all these areas because none of us are, right? There's going to be a work in progress. She's going to be doing her work and she's going to be looking to better herself and grow. And she won't be perfect in every moment because she's a human being, right? So this is, that's my take on what a conscious woman is. And maybe there's a lot of things in there, but I think someone could say there's in the shorter burst of things. But ultimately, that's kind of what I'm seeing in the world when I, when I move around. So, men, what do you need to do? I think this is the most important question. What do you need to do? I think one of the first things, it, this, this is in no particular order. Right. So what do you need to do as a man to attract and meet conscious women? Who do you need to be as a man to meet and attract a conscious woman? Emotional intelligence is going to be high up on the list. It's going to be one of the things you need to be working on. And I'm going to couple emotional intelligence with the confidence in your ability to express yourself in your life, through your life. Like a man who's going to attract a conscious woman is a man who's going to be living his values through his life. He's going to be a man who can express who he is through his life. So I'm going to use myself as an example. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm a conscious man. That's not what uh, I say. Part of my values is like helping people live better life, helping people um, connect better. So through my podcast, I do this. You get all this information for free. This is some of the best information I have, you know, to, to hand out. You get this for free, right? I'm of service in the world. And I feel confident in being able to express myself. Could I express myself better? Most definitely. Do I feel the most confident I've ever been in expressing myself? No. But I feel very capable to express who I am through my work, through my space, like that could be my room, that can be my home, that can be my car, and that can also be through how I dress and how I walk through the world. I express who I am confidently through those those spaces, right? Because my I believe as, as a as a as a conscious man, as a man trying to be more conscious, like 
I have gifts to give to the world. And I want to express those into the world, right? So the emotional intelligence and this confidence, this confidence in expressing oneself. This is something you're going to be, again, this is not a, a, a binary thing. You can be working on, you know, I'm always looking to be more intelligent emotionally. I'm picking up books. I'm, I'm working on. This is the things that men who want to meet conscious women do. You're going to be a man who can set strong and loving boundaries. I set strong and loving boundaries because you can str uh, set harsh, <laughs> you can strong, strong and harsh boundaries, right? And I don't think that's really the way to set our boundaries. We can set boundaries in a really loving way, but you're also going to hold your boundaries and respect other people's boundaries as well. Yeah. Is that going to mean that you're never pushing someone else's boundaries? No, because sometimes, sometimes, and it's going to sound, sometimes the very thing we need to do to be of service to our partner is to help push their boundaries, you know? Something else you're going to be as a man is you're going to be a man of purpose, living a life of purpose. And your purpose is going to be expressed for your life. It's not going to be that you say, oh, yeah, my purpose is to, like, you know, transform how people um, eat. And, but you're not living it at all. You know, you're just sitting at home smashing um, crisps and chocolate on a Saturday afternoon, you know, and not exercising and stuff, but you're going to be living that through your purpose. Another thing, a, a, a man who is, is going to meet and attract this sort of woman, he's going to look after his body, mind and spirit. Body, eating well, exercise, whatever that is, mind, meditation, breath work, practices that nourish the mind. There's so many practices out there. You know, ask Mr. Huberman, he give you a whole load that nourish the mind. That might be reading, that might be learning about things that are good for you to learn, not just like chowing through newspapers and chowing through shitty news and shitty quality media, but things that nourish the mind and the body and make you a better human being and person. Those are what the, the a kind of man who's going to meet and attract a conscious woman is going to be doing with himself. He's going to be meticulous with his clarity in what he wants in a relationship and where he wants his life to go or what he wants that relationship to be a vehicle for. So he's going to be able to express like clearly to a woman, I want a relationship where we have kids and we raise them in a way that makes them beautiful human beings, makes them conscious beings in the world so they can impact the world in a positive light or whatever your version of that is. But you can have clarity. You can be able to say that to someone in a, a number of sentences and it's going to be something that actually enlivens you and excites you. Yeah? This sort of man, the, to be the man you want to be to meet uh, this sort of conscious woman is, is you're going to have to cultivate depth in yourself, right? And this is like, not just, when I say depth, it's like seeing your experience of life and not just having it be the surface level experience, right? It's, it's, I used an example of one of my clients recently. I said, sometimes we could just go on holiday and visit five beaches, right? And just dip our toes in the shallow water. And that's what a lot of us do, right? We do that with jobs. We just go into a job, do it for a year, do it for six months, and then hop out, new job. We do it with relationships. We hop into a relationship. We're in there for a year, not even that like six months a year. We hop in the shallow end and then we get out. Depth is where we go deep into something. You know, that might be, um, I don't know, man, you might go into deep into your, I got really deep into photography. <laughs> Right at one point in my life, I would love. I was for, for, I was literally out of my camera all the time. I've got thousands and thousands of photos that I took. I got really reading about different other photographers, ways of taking shots, different times of day. If you took me to a new place, like when I live in Margate at the moment, if you took me to Margate back then, I'd have my camera and I would research all the best spots to take photographs, the times of day, and all sorts. I got deep into the thing. I was really deeply into it. I could express some depth about photography, but then it's also the depth I could go to within myself emotionally is also an important part of this depth piece is like, there's always like the story of what we do. And then there's a story of like how we feel about what we do. And then there's a story of like why we feel that way and how we feel about why we feel that way it, in, in a way. Right. And I'm not going to really explain that too much because it's like how we get deep into things. It's like maybe I'm here in Margate and, you know, I'm having a baby and how do I feel about that? Like, I feel really scared and I feel nervous, but I feel excited. Why do I feel that way? Well, actually part of it is because, you know, this is something I didn't always know I wanted, but also part of it is that like, oh, I'm scared of not being a better father than my own father. And I'm also scared about, you know, the, 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 the commitment and the burden of that. And that's partly because I have an attachment style that moves away from commitment, but you know, I've done so much work around that. I can get deep into things and I can also get deep into other people. 
right? This is another part of depth is being able to guide and reflect back to someone the depth that you experience in them and using words and God, you can use words, you can use actions, you could use theater to express this, right? Really do it artfully. But this is the depth that I'm talking about, in my opinion, which is so attractive because so few men can do this or feel confident in expressing themselves in this level in any place. Another part here you're going to really start to work on is your kindness and your open heartedness, right? Without being needy. How can you be kind to people and open hearted with people without being needy? Like, oh, I need you to give me something in return. You know, when I first met Orsa, I was very open hearted with my time and my space. You have to remember after six months of knowing each other, COVID hit and we were basically living in my flat. I say basically, we were living in my flat together. And I was just open hearted about it. I was like, yeah, cool, no problem. This is your place. Treat it as your place. I want you to feel free here. You know, it was hard for me to do. Yes, because like I said, I have an attachment style that leads me towards being avoidant. So, you know, commitment around having someone in my space permanently was quite difficult. Did I face those things? Yep, constantly. Did I cry and deepen myself and show up and express how I was feeling and what was going on? Did I get it wrong? Yes. Did I apologize when I didn't? Exactly. <laughs> right. That's part of it as well. It's like, are you sort of man that when you make a mistake, you apologize for it, you observe it, you see it, you apologize and you make a behavioral change. That's another thing that a conscious woman's going to want from her man. Sexual confidence. Sexual confidence and discipline. Now, what's this? I talk in one of my workshops about leaky sexual energy, and this is where like, we're lusting after women all the time. We're objectifying women we see on the street or when we watch porn. That's like leaky sexual energy. There's like a part of us that's just like eking out this sexual energy. We can land as feeling creepy and weird sometimes when we meet people. Leaky sexual energy, where it's just coming out all the time. Or we have shame around masturbation. So we're doing it in secret and it's, it's shadowy and it's shameful and we shame ourselves and we'll feel bad about that. Whereas we can bring that into the light and we can be like, yeah, masturbation is okay. Maybe I have some discipline around how often you mas masturbate or um, how often you ejaculate. To just have the discipline, not for any sort of dogmatic reason, but just because you know you can do it. The discipline, knowing you can do something. Yeah, and confidence, sexual confidence is confidence in your own body, your own ability to touch and feel and ex receive pleasure and give pleasure to a woman that you're with as well. Yeah, these, these are things that are really important. But this sexual confidence piece is so, so important. It's so much so I want to run, I want to run a whole workshop about it because I think a lot of men are not really sexually confident with themselves. And it's, you know, when you can be sexually confident as a man, you can take a woman on a really beautiful sexual journey that is both liberating and healing for her and connecting all at the same time. And I don't think there's that many men that can do this. And a lot of men have bravado around sex or just plain fear. Something else you can be working on as a man is, is self-respect, self-confidence and self-esteem. This kind of goes without being said. These are highly attractive um, traits, self-respect, self-confidence, self-esteem. I don't need to explain them. And this next one I'm going to say, yeah, don't misconstrue me what I'm going to say, but I think this is a really important part, is financial acronym. Having a grasp and understanding on the systems of finance and wealth building and investments and all these things. I think as a man in this day and age, to be a modern man, a modern, attractive man, you need to have a clear understanding of how the finance, how finance, stocks, shares, and so forth work. You don't have to intricate detail, but enough that you could say, Invest some money, right, and turn that into more money. It doesn't have to be you turn one pound into a million pounds, but like if someone gave you a thousand pounds over the course of 10 years, you could turn that into two, two thousand pounds, right? Like understanding things like ETF stocks and shares, ISAs in the UK, like how you can work with those. And don't misconstrue from saying you need to be wealthy or rich. You don't need to be, but it's like you need to have the knowledge of structure, which is a very masculine thing, right? the structures of finance, the structures of money, right? And it's really easy to learn. You know, you can pick up a few very good books, right? And learn about these, these very basic things like ETFs and funds and index track funds and so forth. And I think it's really important for a man to show that he can steward his own money. Yeah. And he could steward the money of, of the two of you if you were together. Another thing I think as a man we must cultivate to meet a, a conscious woman is we need to really be of service to something bigger than ourselves. 
We need to be in service something that's bigger than our ego, bigger than money or bigger than status. Something that's more profound than that. You might be making the world a better place in service of spirit or God or healing or expanding consciousness, right? Or making the world a safer place, making the world uh, a more vibrant, um, confident place, right? But it's being in service of something bigger than just you. I think some so often as when we're just thinking about what I can get out of this, what I can get out of this, what I can get out of this, out of life. And this is something that a conscious woman is not going to really find very attractive about you because it's little boy thinking. That's what kids do. Kids just think about themselves, me and my. I'll take advantage of people, that's fine, I'm getting mine, right? But it's this being in service of something bigger that will really, really elevate you as a human being because it'd be felt through you as you talk, as you express yourself, that people will hear that and be more and more attracted to you in general. Another trait of a man that's going to attract a conscious woman is really this capacity for leadership of both self and other. A lot of the points I'm saying, I've shown in, in what I'm saying today, is that you're going to, it's going to be seen that you can lead yourself and you can lead others. And this is going to be highly attractive. Simple as that. You know, people who are leaders are attractive, not so much because they have power, because they don't always have power, but it's that they're willing to be vulnerable because there's a vulnerability in leadership. I always say this, there's a vulnerability in leadership. There's a vulnerability in me making this podcast. I've had people listen to my podcast and email me, tell me I'm completely wrong and that there's no women like this in the world and blah, blah, blah. It's a vulnerable position to put yourself in, in, in that sort of way, right? A lot of you listening, a lot of people in general I speak to who come to me sometimes in my DMs and so forth are like, man, I, I want to be a coach like you. I want to be create content. Like, where do I start? And I just say, start putting it out. And they're like, yeah, but I'm afraid of what people might think. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I've got some of my clients are, are people I'm coaching and helping them move past the fear of judgment and, and so forth. So it's like leading yourself on others. And sometimes to lead yourself, you've got to lead yourself to someone who's going to help you lead yourself. Yeah. Like, uh, and I guess another part of this as a man who's going to attract a conscious woman is a man who's not afraid to ask for support and help. Yeah. And that might be, he might have the support help of a men's group who are around him, men he can trust, men he could go to for guidance. Or that might be mentors and coaches and um, therapists and all sorts or, or, or elders. But he's going to have people around him who he can rely on to support him as well, to support him and he can ask help from and who he also probably supports other people as well. Another thing this man's going to be, as a man to uh, attract a conscious woman, is going to be a deep presence and awareness of himself, right? Who he is, his values, um, the spaces around him, the environments he's in, but also the ability to kind of observe his own triggers and wounds and fears as they arise in the moment. He's a sort of man that can be in very intense situations with a partner, like arguments, and stay grounded and present, right? Stay grounded and present. Isn't going to be swearing and effing and blinding and shouting and screaming and uh, saying a whole bunch of stuff he doesn't mean. He's going to be able to stay, for the most part, grounded and present. And as I said, you don't have to be perfect, right? But you can be working towards these things because it's really important that we, because in the moments when you meet a really hot woman or a really beautiful woman or a really conscious woman, if you can't be grounded and present, you're going to be overwhelmed by the lust and the lusty feelings you feel towards her. And this will get in the way of you communicating authentically, openly, and honestly with her. So she's not going to feel a connection because you're just going to be overcome by lust. And I'll either drive you to be really quiet because you might get nervous or scared, or it might drive you to be overly eager, right? But because you're so lusty, you believe that she has something you need, right? And she will make you a better person. She will make you better, or you need her to feel complete or good enough but you'll be able to stay present and grounded while feeling, while expressing, but also stay grounded, which is a real art to, to managing all those things. Just a couple more points before we wrap up is one of those is that you're going to be more, you're going to be comfortable with conflict. You're going to be able to move into areas of conflict and again, stay grounded and present, but also be in that conflict. You're not going to be scared of conflict, running away from conflict all the time. You'll be able to meet conflict. And the last point I think I'm going to say here is about you're going to be able to 
experience joy and playfulness. Experiencing joy, feeling joy and expressing joy, while also being able to be playful with yourself and in your life. I think sometimes we get super stiff as men and with all these points like, you know, being present and grounded, like, oh, I have to be really rock-like. It's like, but also there's a playfulness that can come into your being, right? So it's like, you know, that ability to, to have this range as, as a man, this range of emotion, the range of feeling, the range of awareness, like there's a real range for you to build up. So where can you meet a conscious woman? As I described earlier, the first thing I say is everywhere. Everywhere you go, coffee shops, bars, um, you know, where have I been today? I went to a bagel shop, <laughs> got a lovely bagel here. Um, you know, restaurants, they're, they're everywhere, right? But you won't know, they don't, you, don't, you won't be able to look at a woman and go, oh, she's conscious, definitely. You won't really be able to know unless you're highly attuned and feeling, you know, and your intuition is really, really dialed up, right? You're not going to be able to know until you start speaking to her, until you got, start to get to know her a little bit. But there are some places I think that it's, it's, it makes it easier because, I, like I said, I feel like I've met a lot of really beautiful, conscious women over my time, and that's like... They grav they'll gravitate towards experiences of growth that are centered around growing, you know, as a human being. That might be certain types of festivals. Like it was a number of festivals this year, sorry, last year, that were like alcohol free festivals. That some of the the centerpieces of what they're about are about healing and about growth and about community. Yeah, so that's that's a beautiful place to start. Like medicine festival. I was at community festival by Russell Brand as well. That was another beautiful festival. You might meet a woman like this at a yoga class or a yoga retreat. Yeah. You might be at a sex positive workshops and events, for instance. She's going to be a woman who is engaging in the things she's interested in. Right. That's a really important thing. She's going to be engaging in the things she's interested in. That might be, that might be travel, that might be supper clubs, that might be events, that might be all those sorts of things. So it's just remembering that she's going to be engaging in life. So you also need to be engaging in life. Because if you're engaging in life, then you're going to meet women who are engaging in life at a certain level that you are. Go doing the things that you're interested and passionate about, right? That should be a point that I, I forgot earlier is like, as a man, you're going to be someone who's engaging the things that you're passionate about. And you're going to be passionate about them. You're going to speak openly about them in the world. So you're going to be engaged in them and you're going to meet um, women who are the same. You know, I have a friend of mine and he's really into like social justice work. And he meets loads of women in this work. He's really interested. He's like, he goes to talks and he goes to work. He goes to workshops. He goes to marches. Like that's the, he's into. So he engages in it. It's so important that we engage in the things that we're really interested in as well. Because that's where you start to connect with like-minded people. You don't do this by just sitting at home, worrying about things, not engaging in your life, or just going to work. You know, and there's a lot of men I, I've started to work with over the years and who all they do is work. They just work, 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 and their work has no purpose. And then they've got no energy for the weekends. And through working with me, we've tried to expand their life out so they're engaging in the things they're really interested in, right? So that's a wrap for me today. Um, I guess the only thing to say is that, you know, if you're a man and you're wanting to cultivate these traits that I spoke of in this episode, feel free to get in contact with me and we can talk about how we can we can, I can help you with that. You can work together. You can join one of my programs. Yeah. Because this is, this is the stuff that really men leave my programs with a sense of, of depth of emotional intelligence, boundaries, expression, and so forth. So until next week, ciao, ciao.